Hey everybody, it's Dave here, Holiday for Two, and I hope you're having a great week. Recently I posted a review on my channel, Buckskin State Park, but I'm gonna show you another place that's real close to there that we went to called River Island State Park. It's just up the road from Buckskin. And if you're looking for a place that's a little small or a little more intimate, you're gonna love this place. If you have a boat and you like to go fishing or you just wanna water ski or just ride your boat up and down the Colorado River, this is a great place to camp. Like I said, it's a little smaller than Buckskin, so I think it has fewer sites to stay in. It has hookups available and also has a boat ramp. So if you're looking for a place that's a little smaller, I think River Island will suit you nice. Also, just up the road from River Island State Park is Lake Havasu City. So if you're looking for a place to get out and take a drive, that's a good place to go. You can see the London Bridge in Lake Havasu City. Plus, uh, if you want a bite to eat, there's lots of places to eat and just walk around and shop and stuff like that. Also, near Lake Havasu City, if you go out from there, there's a little island out there that has all these little lighthouses that are really cool to look at. And all these little lighthouses are small scale replicas of lighthouses that are all across the United States. So check that out too, it's really interesting. So I hope you like this, River Island State Park. Get a chance to go out there. This is probably the best time to go, May and June or in September, October, that would be the really good months. Uh, September and October, if you wanna get in the water, that's the best time to get in the water because the water's warmer then. Right now the water in the Colorado River will be a little bit cool if you intend to swim. So just a heads up on that. And don't forget, hit like, share, and subscribe. Have a great day and safe travels. Hope you like it. River Island State Park. Let's take a look at it and let's go. So someday when my ship comes in, I know just what we'll do. We'll pack our bags and quit our jobs and have a holiday for two. When we did this trip, this was right after we got all our Jeep set up for flat towing. So I wanted to make sure everything was hooked up and ready to go. And you know, after you do this a couple of times, I've gotten to where I can hook the Jeep up and have it ready to go in about 10 minutes or less. So it's really not hard to get everything set up. And it's a lot easier than actually towing a trailer. But it's a, according to Google Maps, it's a two hour, 39 minute drive, but I would give myself about three hours. Uh, that's what taking a couple potty breaks along the way and I may be getting groceries and gas too. And when we pulled in uh, on the night we pulled in, I didn't realize we had such a small spot, but it worked out okay. Uh, these are actually uh, rated at 20 foot, but our motorhome was small enough we could back in and we did just fine. Uh, these particular spots only had 20 amp hookups, but we didn't need air conditioning, so we were okay there. But just a beautiful spot. This is River Island State Park, and this was uh, between Christmas and New Year's, so it was a little chilly and it had just rained the night before. So the air was really cool and fresh. Nice little campground. There's a boat ramp uh, right on the other side of that little teardrop trailer there, the red and white trailer. This is River Island State Park. Spot 35. Our view. These mountains here. River.
spent the first day just getting some grocery shopping and stuff and driving into Parker, but the next day we decided to take a ride up to the dam. Went across the dam and uh, did some sightseeing. It's a nice little ride. Interesting dam. This is uh, Parker, Parker Dam. Sometimes I call it Davis Dam, but it's really Parker Dam. Went into Lake Havasu City and spent a little bit of time walking around, taking our dog for a walk. And you'll see our little dog Chewy here. He just had a great time walking around. And it wasn't really Where's busy. Because of course this was between there Christmas is. and New Year's so and it was during a weekday. It's always the best time to go. We like to go during weekdays. Oh, there he is. Time to go. Little guy. <laughs> That's Chewy. Pretty over there. I miss him. And so we did a little walk around, got some food, got a bite to eat at the fish and chips restaurant. And it was really nice because they actually would let they let dogs, uh, you can park your dog there and they'll even feed your dog for you while you're eating. <laughs> Did a ride around the uh, where the lighthouses are, the little miniature lighthouses. And that's uh, Lake Havasu in the background there. This little peninsula or island has a whole bunch of these little lighthouses that you can go and check them out. They're all miniature replicas of uh, some of the famous lighthouses in, uh, around the Great Lakes and on the East Coast. Then we went out to Stanaga Springs or out to as the famous uh, Nelly Bar or the Desert Saloon as it's called. The Solar Saloon. The man who's been, he owns this property now for about 35, 40 years. He's been fixing it up over years and it's completely solar powered. They do have live music on the weekends and it only operates in the winter season. So some of, I think from about mid-October till about April and about mid-April they stop uh, because it just gets too hot out there. Serve food and some really good burgers of all different kinds. And this is some of his uh, solar bank that he's been building up there. Like I said, the whole uh, restaurant and saloon is completely solar powered. And uh, even the band, when the band plays, I mean everything, there's no power to the facility oh and if you do plan to go out to the Nelly bar saloon make sure you take cash with you because they do not have a bank machine there so you want to make sure everything's cash no credit cards but uh the weekends in the in the when the weather starts to warm up this was actually cold that day they had the fireplace going it was a little bit cold but there were still people out there even that day but boy when they get busy on the weekends when it's nice out there it, that place will be crowded, and they'll have a band playing. It usually plays from like 1 in the afternoon to 4 or 5 o'clock. So please, wish you safe and happy travels, and please hit like, share, and subscribe. And also, stay tuned. I'll show you some more information on things to do in the area. This is Dave saying bye. Have a great day. I'm going to show you how to get to River Island State Park. Now, according to Google Maps, it's a two hour and 38 minute drive, but I would plan on a little bit longer. I would plan on at least a three hour drive. That would give you some time somewhere along the trip to get some gas, and maybe pull in, and make a potty stop somewhere. There are some rest areas on the I 10 if you're going uh, I 10 to uh, Vicksburg this way from Phoenix. There's a couple of places you can pull in on rest areas and take breaks. But uh, when you get there, they call this the uh, Parker Strip, is what it's called. A lot of times people call it the Parker Strip. And if you want to get groceries or supplies, there's a couple of stores in Parker right here. I know there's a Walmart and some grocery stores where you can get supplies to pull in there. And then uh, come up to 95. Um, there's a, if you're looking for a free place to stay, there's a, boon, a Blue Water um, casino right here that offers overnight stays. So if you're just looking for a quick one night stay or two night stay and you pull in and you're a little bit ahead of your reservation, that's a good place to pull in. Like I said, there's a Walmart in here, some hardware stores if you need uh, supplies. There's also some fuel uh, places here to get gas along here. I don't know what the current prices on gas are. The Running Man stations, let's see if it shows up here. Uh, 489 that sounds kind of high compared to Phoenix, but you may be able to find it cheaper by the time you get out there. Um, so you make your way up 95, and there's a lot of other RV places along here too. You can always check those out. Um, we've had some relatives stay in some of these. We stayed in Buckskin, 
and I did a review on that. And this is, of course, River Island State Park right here. Like I said, it's a little bit smaller venue, so there's not quite as many spots to stay in. It's tucked in between two mountain ridges right here, so it's kind of a quiet, intimate right in there. And if you're looking for some things to do, you can also make a ride out to the Nelly Bar, the Nelly Saloon, which they call the, uh, it's the saloon that's completely solar powered. And I'll show you some videos. I think there's probably some pictures and videos of that in the video that I just showed you. Um, some other things to do is you can drive across to the uh, Parker Dam right here, Davis Dam. No, Parker Dam, I'm sorry. Davis Dam is up farther. And then you're going to make your way up the 95 uh, across the bridge here at Bill Williams Memorial Bridge and then up to uh, Lake Havasu City, which is just about a 30 mile, 35 mile drive up the, to Lake, Lake Havasu City. Now, I was telling you about some boondocking spots. And if you're looking for a place to boondock, there's a couple spots between Lake Havasu and Parker Dam here. That's the Mojave Wash Trailhead. And this is BLM Campground Standard Wash Area. We have not stayed there yet, so I can't tell you about what it has available as far as facilities. But I can tell you this, every time we've driven by there, there are tons of people camping out there. Let me switch to satellite mode here real quick. And you'll see what I mean. There's a spot here where you can pull off the road and then go off to the, uh, to the east of the highway, 95. And you'll see right here, you can see people camping along there. So that is a spot that one of these days we're going to have to try out. We haven't done it yet, but I do know it's a very popular BLM campground area. So of course, if you want to go up to uh, the Lake Havasu, that's a nice ride up there. And the place where all the little uh, lighthouses, well, let me go up a little bit. Here we go. It's actually a peninsula or an island. They uh, call this Grand Island Park. And that's where you saw the uh, beach and that I was on the Jeep and stuff where we were doing the lighthouse replicas. Took a couple of pictures of those. If you go around this little island here, there's a whole bunch of little lighthouses on some of these points. And uh, it's really kind of fun to take a ride out there and walk around this Beach Comer Boulevard. Uh, if you're looking for places to eat, there's a couple places here near the London Bridge. You can park. There's parking right in here. And a big parking lot right in here. There's also some stores here if you need supplies. Walgreens and Safe, Safeway, In-N-Out Burger. But there's a really good little fish, and, uh, fish place here that has a... Let's see if I can find it and zoom in here. I think it's right here, if I remember. It's where it says the chair. And this is the little restaurant right here that you can eat at. It has uh, great fish and chips right there. Plus, you can just walk along in here. and It's a nice little walk along the shoreline trail. Or go across and walk around on the, walk around the other side. Uh, there's a restaurant over here. Shoe Bruce Restaurant. I've never been there, so I can't tell you if that's any good. But I will say the fish and chips place right there. Great little uh, shop for fish and chips. So that's the uh, London Bridge in Lake Havasu City. A fun day drive up the up there to go check that out. Or if you want to check out the boondocking spots along the 95 there also. So definitely a must-see. Lots of things to do near here. Um, if you boondock, of course, you want to try and get out and see some of those things. There's also some RV resorts on the other side of the California side. So definitely worth checking out some of those. If you park somewhere and you have a vehicle that you can take out and drive around, check all of those out because this is a really popular area, especially like April and May. June, it can start getting warm. But if you've got a boat or you want to get in the water, you can always cool off. And the locals tell us that September and October are the best times if you want to get in the water because the water is still warm from the summer, but the temperatures start to moderate around September and October. So that's when the best um, time to get in the water. Otherwise, it gets kind of cold and May is the water still cool. Another place that I haven't been to yet, but one of these days we're going to check out, is this Cattail Cove State Park. And the funny thing was, 
my wife and I tried to take our Jeep back here and just look at it and take some pictures, but they wouldn't even let us get in the gate. I was like, what? <laughs> but uh, I hear a lot of good things about this. There's also a boat ramp there. There's a little store. So definitely uh, you get a chance to, if you've been there or find out something about that, check that out too. And uh, just a fun place. I could probably go on and on about things to do, but hope you have fun there and check it out and have a good time. Safe travels. Talk to you later.